Okay, so our second uh, earthquake case study uh, that we're going to look at is the Nepal earthquake. It occurred back in April of 2015 and was a 7.8 magnitude earthquake on the Richter scale. Now, first off, when we're going to start talking about our comparison between this and the Christchurch earthquake that we looked at in uh, another video, obviously the major difference we can notice first off is the difference in terms of the size of the earthquake. Uh, the Christchurch one was 6.3, the 7.8, so this is a significantly larger earthquake. So we can start putting down some of the differences between the two in terms of their impacts down to the natural factor of strength or magnitude of the earthquake. But as we're going to see in a second, the, the scale of the difference between the two earthquakes can't, cannot just be attributed to that difference in strength. So like the Christchurch one, we're going to look firstly at the effects or impacts and the responses. And we're going to break those down into primary and secondary, short term and long term. So if we start off with the primary impacts then, as we said last time, we want to kind of keep this idea, we've got the similar structure, we want to go with the similar kind of impacts. So we're going to talk about deaths first off. If you remember back in the Christchurch when we had 180 deaths, in Nepal we had 8,800, so a much higher number. As we said, some of that may be attributable to the uh, higher magnitude of the stronger earthquake, but obviously uh, that such a large difference has probably got other factors behind it associated with the difference in the level of wealth between the two countries. Uh, another primary effect okay, was the 250,000 buildings that were destroyed in Nepal by the earthquake. You're going to link that in again to the death toll, maybe in Nepal, building regulations and the quality of the building materials used means that less of the buildings collapsed during the earthquake in uh, Christchurch in comparison to a large number of them in Nepal, which may again contribute to that higher death toll. We also looked in the Christchurch uh, example at a famous landmark that was destroyed as a primary effect. We looked at Lancaster Park, the rugby stadium. In uh, keeping with our idea of trying to have similar case studies, we've got the same idea in Nepal. We've got a famous landmark destroyed. This time, rather than a rugby stadium, we've got a uh, famous landmark, a uh, religious uh, symbol called the Darahara Tower. Uh, this collapsed in the centre of Kathmandu, trapping around 200 people inside. Moving on to the secondary impacts, we saw uh, significant impacts uh, in such as cholera spreading amongst survivors. This was something that we didn't see in the, Nepo in the uh, New Zealand earthquake in Christchurch due to the fact that it's a higher income country so they had stores of clean water and emergency services were able to access uh, survivors quickly. One of the things we did see in Christchurch though was a decrease in tourism. Uh, Nepal suffered a similar decrease due to the destruction of their major attractions and obviously kind of damaging of their reputation. In fact, 33% or a third uh, of their tourism was lost following the earthquake. In Nepal, this is probably going to have a much more significant impact than in Christchurch, as tourism would have been one of their major sources of income, whereas in New Zealand, it's a smaller contributor to their economy. One of the other secondary impacts was uh, an increase in death tolls due to the num large number of avalanches that were set off in, uh, on Mount Everest and in the Himalayas, okay, which uh, ripped through base camp, uh, killing, survive, uh, killing climbers and also putting a very premature end to the climbing season, which again would have contributed to the decrease in tourism in Nepal. So moving on to the responses, we've got the uh, short-term responses. And again, we're trying to go with a similar structure and similar themes to how we did with Christchurch to allow for a more easy comparison. So if we start off with the idea of international aid. Now remember, Christchurch only received a very small amount of international aid, around $7 million, okay. due to the fact it's a high-income country and therefore was able to support itself. Nepal, a low-income country, was much more uh, heavily dependent on the international aid, and it received somewhere in the region of about $120 million from a variety of international organisations and countries uh, to help them in terms of providing emergency medical supplies, drink, uh, drinking water, clean and safe drinking water, to try and reduce the spread of diseases such as cholera. We also talked in Christchurch about how the Red Cross were involved and how they provided temporary accommodation for 200 people. 
much larger contribution from the Red Cross in Nepal. They provided temporary accommodation and shelter for over 200,000 people. You can obviously make the direct link there between the much larger number of buildings destroyed due to the poor building quality and regulations in Nepal. Again, that reliance in terms of short-term aid on international organisations is shown by the fact that Facebook became involved. They provided a way of people noting or marking that they were safe, or what they would call a Facebook check-in page, uh, so that people, their family, friends, relatives, uh, were able to know that they were safe and uh, had not been uh, severely harmed or injured by the earthquake. In terms of the long-term responses then, uh, we saw Nepal try and combat its decrease in tourism. Cafes and restaurants in major tourist hotspots like Kathmandu focused their efforts on encouraging tourists, uh, sorry, encouraging locals rather than tourists to spend money in their, in their facilities. They provided things such as happy hours for local people so that they could make up for the shortfall in tourism through local income. In an attempt to help them rebuild many of their tourist attractions, the Nepalese government increased the uh, attraction prices by around two times. This money was therefore put in to help them rebuild structures and re-advertise uh, these facilities to tourists. One of the other things as well, again, trying to keep this link with uh, similarities to the Christchurch one, was the uh, reinstalling of electricity and other utilities such as fresh water supplies. In Christchurch, if you remember, that only took roughly around a week. However, due to the high kind of uh, and steep relief of much of Nepal, meaning that many parts of it, particularly its rural areas, are very inaccessible, there were some parts of Nepal that even a year later were still without basic utilities having been reinstalled, such as electricity. Okay, we can link that in partly, as we said, due to the relief, but also partly due to the fact that Nepal is a poorer country, was maybe not as well equipped and therefore not as quick to respond to the disaster. 